I did not I did not end up reading more of Call Me By Your Name last night. I just went to bed and fell asleep. I started listening to Coraline because I found the audiobook. So that's good. So I started listening to that and I'm literally about to finish it like right now. So I'm gonna get up and make myself food. I feel like I'm in my Kim Possible looking outfit. This is not what I wanted to wear, but it's what I got, so. <laughs> Bye. Oh, you look so sad. I need two out of Heartstopper, 162 in Coraline. I am all up. I've read 544 pages, which is the most out of the past four days. So that's good. Australia was a society that valued equality above all other virtues and was committed to a fair go for all. It didn't fit easily into any of my assumptions about my own society. If such a manifest injustice could flourish in 1968, whatever had been done in the past, if this could be done to children, whatever punishments were meted out to adults, why didn't I know? Why hadn't I been told? My father often told me stories about places we visited or passed on the road, the scene of a battle between Aborigines and Redcoats, the site of Governor Arthur's camps as he conducted the Black Line across the island in 1830. He told me how his aunt, who had brought him up, talked of Truganini, who was one of the characters about town up until the time of her death in 1876. But given what my future held, it was the intense racism of the 1890s that I most significantly and conspicuously failed to notice. And it was so obvious in many of the texts that I read that year. The equality so exalted was the equality of white men of British descent. Non-Europeans, Asians, Pacific Islanders, Aborigines, had no place in the radical utopia. They couldn't aspire to equality and had to be excluded. They could be vilified, denigrated and abused. Non-Europeans threatened to corrupt society undermine democracy and pollute the pure blood of the white master race. The fact that these ideas had real, dramatic and damaging impact on Aborigines, Chinese and Pacific in Australia at the turn of the century was lost on me. The fact that the heroic bushmen had blood-stained hands was a discovery that awaited me some distance down my own intellectual track. While I was tardy... It was a matter of embarrassment he was being heckled by a party of young Australians. Among other things, I told him that there was no racial prejudice in Australia because everyone being was equal. With that, the speaker turned on the was a long tirade about Australia's treatment of the Aborigines. He was probably better informed about the matter than were the Australians in his audience, myself included. He scorned the hecklers for being ignorant about their own history. For the first time... I literally don't want to do anything today. I kind of want to go for a um, W with Buckles, because he's... A bit sad and needs more energy. He's missing Stacy.
He's so cute. <laughs> Been listening to this audio for a book a bit and I've got thoughts about it but I just don't know how to express them you know um it's this audiobook that I'm listening to is like racist but like on purpose it's racist in order to make commentary about how that's how he just grew up and why it's wrong so it's one of those stories um that like they're talking about it on purpose in order to get their point across but like some of the stuff in there is just so like it's really hard for me to wrap around the fact that people are like that because like I still obviously this book is about a man who's like from an older generation so it's like you know different but like so seeing like how much people cared in this audiobook, I'm like, the fuck? Do people really be that butthurt by the fact that people of colour exist? A lot of it is just ignorance and thinking that they they get more than what we do. You know, like, I'm sorry, Karen, that you're upset by the fact that, you know, Jimmy over there, who happens to be Aboriginal, gets payments when, like, you get payments for your own fucking, for having your kids. So, like, why are you butthurt by them getting payments if you're also getting payments? Like, I don't get it. <laughs> like... You know, single mothers get Centrelink as well. I don't understand why people get so upset by Aboriginal people getting Centrelink. Like, uh, anyway. There was this part here that I was going to say last night that I completely forgot. It was talking about how he, like, visited a, um, oh my god, I forgot the, what the word was. Prison. <laughs> I'm an idiot. He visited a prison. And should she not, there was like a young, young girl there and she had like a cast. And when he asked why she was in there, because he was like, this is really weird that she's such a young kid. Like, why, why is a young kid in prison, right? And he was like, oh, she swore to a teacher. She's only in there for, like, she was in a teacher a lesson, put her in prison for a day. And I'm like, what the fuck? Even he was like, what the fuck? This isn't normal. Like, why is that socially acceptable to put the, like, Aboriginal girl in, in prison because she swore at the teacher? Like, I don't know when that particular story, like, happened. But, like, hearing that made me go, excuse me? Like, I really can't wrap my head around how people are so butthurt about other people just existing. I mean, I say that. And, like, I get it, but I also don't get it, you know? Like, it's just... I can't. I'm, like, actually getting a bit frustrated here. Because, like, I started reading this book because I wanted to address my own racism. Things like the whole saying, why weren't we learnt? Why weren't we told? Like, that's literally the mindset that I had for ages. Like, why don't I know this? And it's like, you know why you don't know this, Haley? Because you didn't take the time to learn. It's just simple as that. I didn't take the time to educate myself. I was so focused like shit that's going on in America that I didn't even think about what's going on in Australia. What happens literally every single day. Very uncomfortable, so I always avoided it. I would actively talk about being gay and like preach about marriage equality and everything, but I would always avoid race stuff. Frustrated. I'm getting really frustrated by this audiobook. In like a good way. Like I need to hear it. You know, I need to hear the things that I personally agree with, disagree with in order to grow and to learn, to address what I myself have done wrong. But I think I'm going to take a break because mental health is important and yesterday was not a good day for me. So I'm going to pick up call me by your name and transfer from racism to gayness because gayness always makes me happy and racism always makes me angry
I love being unhealthy. <laughs> We don't just elect the president. We vote for our state governments and city governments. We vote for governors. 50% of eligible voters voted last time. So educate yourself if you haven't already. 